request right across the street. Uh, he's going to spend a couple minutes with us this morning. You know, I looked at his uh, biography last night. Uh, this man has uh, served in Germany, Washington, the Antarctic, <laughs> Middle East. Uh, this is his third tour of duty, I believe, here in San Diego. Commanded Coronado earlier in his, in his career. Chief of Staff here across the street, and now Commander Navy Region Southwest. Either he's very accomplished, or the guy can't hold a job. I'm not sure which. Uh, he's got a good one now, and again, it's our, our privilege, really, and my honor to please welcome to the stage Rear Admiral Yancey Lindsay. It's the latter, I'm sure. Uh, man, where did that UAV go? I thought that was the flyby. <laughs> Interesting times we live in. Hey, could I get a quick selfie with y'all? Because you are quite, quite amazing. That's pretty good. Perfect. Thank you. Like I said, it's a different time of day. You know? Well, thanks, Scott, for the introduction. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to join you today on such an important occasion and in such a special place. Midway Museum is truly a magical place an amazing asset to San Diego, but really to our nation and to our veterans. It's a symbol of resiliency, of achievement, the namesake for the turning point, literally a turning point of World War II, and a testament to the men and women in uniform and a nation that supported them. I especially want to welcome our active duty service members and their families who have joined us today, and also our veterans and their families. Thank you all for your service. There are two other groups of patriots that I'd like to recognize today and thank this morning. One is our Blue Star families. Those are families who have a loved one currently serving in armed forces. Do we have any Blue Star family members here today? Fantastic. Thank you. Another is our Gold Star families. Those are families who have lost a loved one in service to our nation. Do we have any Gold Star family members with us today? Could you please stand and let us show our appreciation for you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. May we never take for granted the willingness of parents to raise their children with a love for country and a desire to serve their fellow, fellow American. I am truly humbled to be in your presence. Thank you again for your service and for that of your loved one. So we gather on this Memorial Day, this Memorial Day weekend, a day on, not a day off, to honor those who sacrificed their lives in service to our country. If you believe as I do, that God implants an intense desire in every human heart to live in freedom, then this holiday, on which we remember all servicemen and women who gave their lives so that we may live in freedom, this holiday is special and sacred. We gather to memorialize, memorialize the <laughs> fallen because the spirit of freedom will never let us forget. But while we must never forget, so dear a sacrifice demands more. Freedom and liberty are precious. They are fleeting if we take them for granted. If we don't work at them, sustain them and magnify them. Near the end of the movie, Saving Private Ryan, the character played by Tom Hanks, Captain Miller, sits mortally wounded and shares these final words with Private Ryan, played by the actor Matt Damon. Captain Miller says, earn this. Earn this. Those two words are a call to action. A call to action from those citizen soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and coast guardsmen who set aside their personal dreams and desires to ensure their fellow Americans and free peoples around the world could enjoy life and liberty. A call to action to remember that freedom is not free. It must be purchased and ensured by men and women rising to serve a cause greater than their own. It's a call to action for each of us in our own way, in our own lives, to give meaning to their service and to their sacrifice. 
It is a call to action that acknowledges freedom and liberty are precious. They are fleeting if we take them for granted. Earn this. President Ronald Reagan addressing Memorial Day gathering said it this way, we must try to honor them, not for their sakes alone, but for our own. And if words cannot repay the debt we owe them, surely with our actions, we must strive to keep faith with them and with the vision that led them to battle and to their final sacrifice. Our first obligation to them and ourselves is plain enough. The United States and the freedom for which it stands, the freedom for which they died, must endure. It must prosper. Their lives remind us that freedom is not bought. It has a cost. It imposes a burden. And just as they whom we commemorate were willing to sacrifice, so must we, in a less final, less heroic way, be willing to give of ourselves. So that's it. To earn this, we must be willing to give of ourselves. Give of ourselves and remember. Captain Michael Davis O'Donnell, a young Huey helicopter pilot in Cambodia during the Vietnam War, understood this when he wrote this poem. If you are able, save for them a place inside of you and one backward glance when you are leaving for the places they can no longer go. Be not ashamed to say you love them, though you may or may not always have. Take what they left and what they have taught you with their dying and keep it with your own. And in that time when men decide and feel safe to call the war insane, take one moment to embrace those gentle heroes you left behind. Memorial Day is set aside to evoke those general, gentle heroes like Captain O'Donnell, who made the ultimate sacrifice just two months after he wrote those words and was missing in action for more than 20 years before his remains were discovered in the jungles of Cambodia and finally brought home to be laid to rest. Our strength as a nation is drawn from military healer, heroes like Captain O'Donnell and from the warriors who sleep forever in hallowed final rest resting places around the world. Men and women who stood in the gap, who wore the cloth of our nation and served so that our nation could endure. In the book of John chapter 15, verse 13, the Bible says, greater love has no man than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. They loved us. Now we must show them we love them too. So we gather this morning in freedom to salute the flag, to sing our national anthem, to enjoy our liberty, to live our lives free from oppression, free from tyranny. Why? Because we can. Because it was earned by our veterans and it continues to be earned every day by those who voluntarily serve in our nation's armed forces. May we never forget their sacrifices. May we never forget their service. And we, may we never forget their love for us. It has been both my honor and my ple pleasure to be with you this morning. I thank you for the opportunity to participate in this tribute to our nation's heroes. May God bless every one of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marine and Coast Guardsmen, past and present, and may we may God bless their families as well, who answered our nation's clarion call. And may God continue to bless these United States of America. Thank you. Thought that was a little weak of a thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Yeah. Another round of applause. There we go. Show us some little midway energy around here.